Have you looked at the Cybertruck and thought, man, that thing will be great in an urban environment, but it might not do so well off-road? Well, think again. Tesla just got done testing it in Baja, California, and it looks like it's kicking ass. Because we really wanted to see firsthand how these trucks handled one of the most challenging routes in the world. These two trucks are straight out of the factory. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. First of all, if you want one of these, we've got Cybertruck Back to the Future font and everything. There's a ton of Cybertruck merch at the merch store. Definitely check out the link in the description and get yourself a t-shirt or a mug or a tumbler or something like that to get ready for the very imminent, I would guess, Cybertruck delivery event. Okay, so what was I talking about in the introduction and what was that little clip from? Well, that was from a live stream that Tesla did near Cabo San Lucas in Baja, California yesterday, where Tesla replicated at least part of the Baja 1000, which is basically going from the Mexican-US border in the north all the way down to Cabo San Lucas in the south. Real quick from Wikipedia, we can see here the Baja 1000 is an annual Mexican off-road motor motorsport race held on the Baja California Peninsula. It is one of the most prestigious off-road races in the world, having attracted competitors from six continents. And then of course, a bunch of other details about it. If you don't know where Baja is, I'll, I've given you a nice little map here. So this is the United States, obviously Mexico. This is the Cancun area down here. And this is the Baja Peninsula down here below San Diego. So we've got Baja and then Baja Sur. So the race varies every year, but it starts fairly near to San Diego. It goes all the way down to Cabo San Lucas at the Southern tip, and then oftentimes turns around and comes back again. And then we can get a little bit of a closer up view where you can see Los Angeles and San Diego go there for scale. And then an even closer view down here, you can see Cabo and Todos Santos here. Just to give you a little perspective, my niece got married in Todos Santos and we flew into Cabo San Lucas and it's about a two hour drive, a little bit more than that, if I'm remembering correctly, two hours and 15 minutes or something. So that right there is a pretty long drive and that's on roads and everything, of course. So doing this entire trip, it sounds like the Tesla team spent more than a week doing this and they were not only driving, but from what they were talking about in the video, they're actually doing tweaks to software, looking at the firmware, checking out the hardware, making sure the car doesn't break down, any of that kind of stuff. So it sounds like it was a very busy week for these folks. And then if you're curious, this is the 2015 route, which was run in November of 2015, obviously. So actually, in this case, it looks like it's just Baja Sur, but basically they're driving down from the border of Baja and Baja Sur. So somewhere around here at a guess, hard to tell because the map is not particularly uh, ornate in terms of like all the demarcations of cities and things. But anyway, they come all the way down here to the south. This looks like it's fairly close to Cabo. This might be Todos Santos right here at the uh, sort of western tip on this. And then they turn around and come back. So they didn't exactly follow the route. They mostly just drove down. I assume that they got the car in LA or something and they just drove it from LA down to Cabo San Lucas. And the big thing, of course, was that they did almost all of that off-road. So with that as background, we can turn to this. We are in two cyber trucks. You can see there's RC on the back of it. And so obviously it's a release candidate. And unfortunately the map here that he's got in view doesn't really have like where they are, but they're, they're basically driving to the ocean in Cabo. So they're way, way, way down here. So they're right at the Southern tip of Baja Sur. So, so that's where they are doing this, this drive. And what you'll see here is as soon as they get off the road, they're actually on a road right now, but they turn off immediately after it starts is the off-road nature of the driving and how very, very rough it is the poor guy's trying to hold the camera and the thing's just bouncing everywhere. Anyway, I'm gonna cut into about four minutes into this video. Of course, I will leave a link to the original in the description so you can check it out. How did the trucks do? Well, you can kind of see for yourself. These are, these trucks are hardcore. They're super fun, super durable. The, uh, the only issues we've had, two flat tires so far. You know, uh, we're still a few miles from the ocean, but we'll make it. I think the ability of these trucks is super impressive. You can get on the road, be super comfortable driving on road, turn off onto the trailhead and suddenly switch to off-road mode. We've got air suspension and active dampers, so we can totally change the ride and handling characteristics of the vehicle. So first of all, you can hear from the video that it's pretty rough and bouncy and everything like that. But also you can hear from the video that the only problems that they've had thus far, and remember these are release candidate vehicles, is two flat tires, which is not surprising whatsoever because of course they're doing a lot of off-roading, which tends to have that happen. But, and that's really not a Tesla's fault. It's whoever's manufacturing the tires. I'm actually not sure who makes the tires at this point. But anyway, so that's, that's all they've had in terms of issues. The vehicles have survived it and done very, very well. And this is pretty much of a torture test 
podcast. And also he discusses how as they, you know, you're driving down the road, you got comfort setting and all of that kind of stuff. It drives really well for, you know, city driving and everything. And it's tuned for that. As soon as you turn off the road, which they do right at the beginning of the video, you just kick it into off-road mode, one of probably many off-road modes. And you utilize that mode. It, it changes the air suspension. It probably softens things up, probably adds a lot more torque vectoring and things like that to the different wheels. So, you know, all the, the standard off-road kind of stuff. And of course it likely raises the bottom of the vehicle so that you can go over rocks and things like that. So, so standard off-road stuff, but it just happens, you know, flip of a switch, no big deal. You don't have to even think about it. I wouldn't even be surprised someday if the cars are sort of geofenced and as you turn off the road onto off-road, it kind of knows that you are and it therefore is able to proactively set it to some sort of a setting that might be a useful one for that particular environment. All right, so now I'm gonna skip ahead to close to six minutes into the video, so you can check that out on your own if you want, where he starts talking about tuning of the hardware and software and everything. And by the way, apologies, the person who's talking never identified himself. If you know who it is, definitely leave that note in the comments because I actually don't know who it is, so apologies. Whoever it is, thank you for posting this. It's really, really cool. Yeah, this has been a super fun trip. Really, really successful overall, as far as an off-road durability trip. We've got lots of time, lots of seat time, uh, tuning all the firmware, all the variables, testing out all the hardware, taking it to the extreme. It's been great. I'm really excited for everybody else to get a chance to, to experience this product as we have. So you can hear that they are working hard, but they're doing things like tuning software, looking at the firmware, making sure all of that stuff is good. If you saw my previous video about a leaked interior of the vehicle, you can check it out here if you haven't seen it. But if you saw that video, you can see that there are some things, you know, error messages across the screen that were indicating that the, you know, the, the software and firmware and everything of the vehicle was not perfect yet. So still working on it, still tweaking it, all of that good stuff. The nice part, of course, about Tesla's is that if you're one of the very lucky folks that gets an early VIN Cybertruck, you will be able to get software updates over the air, which will improve the vehicle over time. So a lot of times if you get a very new vehicle, you're like, oh no, you know, the software is not going to be, it's going to be glitchy. It won't work as well and everything. First of all, I expect Tesla will have it very, very, you know, well polished before it gets delivered to customers. But second of all, anything that does turn up, it's just going to be a software update and over the air software update. So that should allow the car to drive better over time. But it's really cool to see that they're not just doing tuning, driving around town and things things like that, driving on highways, although that's always obviously necessary and quite frankly, more necessary in general because that's where people spend most of their time. But it's also really cool to see that they're with these release candidates, that they're actually driving these things off-road in real world situations. I would not at all be surprised if this year or next year, the Cybertruck actually races in the Baja 1000, just, you know, just for fun. I don't think they expect to win it or anything like that, but they can race it and have fun and they can see how it does in that. So anyway, like I said, I will leave a link to the entire video in the description so you can check it out at your leisure, but I wanted to point this stuff out. I was going to do a different video today, which is the second part of a two-part series. The first part is up here. Very popular video, by the way, so thank you for watching it. Anyway, I will do that tomorrow instead. So sorry about that, but you know, sometimes Tesla releases things like this and you have to just sort of pick up where you can. So, all right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking, and I hope it gets you even more excited about getting a Cybertruck so you can take it on your own big or small off-road adventures. I know for a fact that as soon as I get one, I'm going to take it off-road somewhere in the Appalachians, you know, around here and have some fun driving it around and see how it does. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please do like it so other people can find it, and of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my ex-subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel in any way that you can. And if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget that we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a new Cybertruck or other Tesla vehicle or a solar roof or a power wall or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.